So this is my six and a half metre hardtop offshore, designed by CNC Marine, um, built by Andre at Bluey Fab, and yeah, finished off by myself. Um, I'm really stoked with the result. It's been an amazing process, and I guess the support of the guys at CNC and of and of Andre um, has really helped me get to a, a result that I'm proud of. And um, yeah, I, look, if you're open to a bit of work doing it yourself, um, I really can't recommend the process enough. It, it's really rewarding and the product at the end is amazing. So my name's Jed Whitford. I'm the owner of the boat. Um, so I've had I've had a couple of boats before. The last one was a five meter Genesis. Um, that's I I bought that boat as a as a bit of a tester for the family to see if they were going to get into it, and um, I guess they did. And then I went looking for for another boat. Um, I struggled to find a boat that wasn't. 10, 15 years old and what I considered to be really expensive. Uh, and then I, I guess I looked into buying a brand new boat and didn't like the wait times. Um, I'd always wanted to build a boat. And so I guess I started looking into building a boat. Uh, at which point my wife piped up and said, you've got too many projects. <laughs> um, how about you don't? And so I emailed uh, Marsh, and, and I guess asked a few questions about if there were other, if there were people around that were building them for for customers, and um, that Marsh pointed me in the direction of a few people. Um, I, I spoke to I spoke to all of them, uh, and I guess uh, finally spoke to Andre. And Andre um, really made the process easy. Uh, is it, easy going about the whole thing. I guess I wanted to be involved. In the process, and he was open to that, um, and um, and and so yeah, I guess I, I placed an order, and um, yeah, we got started. Yeah, you got the custom built to the way you wanted it. Yep. Yep. <coughs> yeah. Okay. So Jed wanted to to change a few things of the layout and um, add, added just the way he wanted it built um, for more deck space. So change up the rear um, transom here. And I said, go for it, do whatever you want and we can, we'll work around it and we can we can make it happen. So that's what we did. And so, yeah, I, I emailed Marsh who passed me back on to, to Liam and um, Liam helped me through the process of, I guess, landing on what was the final design. Um, you know, ended up with three or four changes, the big ones being all around the transom, um, but we've also made changes to seat boxes and and a couple other little minor things the dash up the front there and, and then there were a few more modifications that andre and i did in um in the build process um yeah that that process um i guess i, I spent a fair, fair bit of time bugging andre um and for probably half of it um i would have been there every day or at least a couple of times a week um, yeah, so we, we've done a whole pile of things. We've changed the, the rod racks across the back, um, changed, changed the dash layout completely. Um, I think that's most of it. Yeah. 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 Other than that, it, it's, you know, a pretty, it's a standard six and a half meter hard top offshore, standard 200 liter tank, 150 liter kill tank and dry storage um, you know with the modifications I've got a good two or three hundred mils of extra deck space which you know when you've got four kids and uh, is, a, is a huge thing just having that space and being able to you know all be there without being under each other's feet um, and, and yeah I mean an enormous amount of storage I've been really surprised in the finishing off of it um, just how much space there is. You know, I've got a 50 litre Waco fridge under the helm seat uh, and, and yeah, enormous amount of storage under the, <coughs> under the, and under the passenger seat. So I, I'm, yeah, 
really pleased with the outcome. You know, today's the first day on the water. Um, we launched it about 10 o'clock this morning and I've taken it for a run through the sound and out three quarters of the way to Rottnest and back. Um, I've only put 150 horsepower even route on it, mostly because I guess there's a 12 month wait at least on outboards and I could get this now. Um, it's a bit under what um, CNC recommend, but it goes just fine. The boat's up planing really early. Um, comfortable cruise at about 25 knots using under a litre a kilometre. Um, and, and then uh, top speed of about 34 knots. I'll probably get a bit more out of it with a change of prop. Um, handles the sea really well. Handles the following sea beautifully. Um, just sort of sits. It'll, it'll just sort of sit on a swell and it, and it, and it won't um, accelerate over the top of it unless you tell it to. It'll just, it'll just ride, ride it in like a wave and, and um, nice smooth ride that way. You know, not even a thought of broaching or anything like that. It's, um, I, I was really impressed with that, um, especially in WA where you know, most of the time you're going to be coming in with a two metre swell and 10 or 15 knots of wind behind you. So as far as the process goes, I started thinking about this the middle of last year. Um, I, I placed an order in, I think it was November last, yeah. November last year. Uh, kit arrived late in February. Um, I brought this home from Andre's on... Mid-March, wasn't it? No, uh, 27th of March it was, I brought it home. And... Yeah, I guess I've spent uh, two weeks on it full time since then, and probably another week. Um, yeah, pretty flexible time, but a lot of hours that week. It, it wasn't full time, but it was close. Uh, and, and then you know, half an hour every day, sort of thing. The rest, the rest of the, the rest of the time. So, you know, I guess from Andres to today, um, it's been six weeks, I guess. Um, so yeah, the process has been very quick. Um, I guess in comparison to a, you know, going to a Genesis, for instance, or a, or an Oceanic or somebody else, um, the product's really good. I, I, I'm really stoked with it. Um, and yeah, look, I guess I've, you know, between Andre and I, there's probably I'd say 500 hours in this. Yeah. Um, and, and yeah, look, you know, building a boat the way I have probably isn't for everybody, but anybody can do it. It's it's just a matter of commitment. Yeah. Um, and, and yeah, look, there, there's good people. Um, you know, Andre has been an absolute godsend in the process. He's not only, I guess, done a fantastic job of building the thing, but he's you know he's helped me out along the way as well with you know. Um, you know, hatches and advice and this, that and the other thing along the way has, you know, really made it easy for me um, to get to this point. I guess I did all the fit out myself, um, with the exception of the windows. Out front we've got a Viper anchor winch. It wasn't originally in the plan or it was sort of something for later on, but after I bought the winch and after I bought the anchor and felt it, I thought, no, that's got to go on now. Um, the windows are by Marine and Mobile Windows, the same people that did the windows on Andre's boat, the Genesis over there. Um, in the dash, I've got um, twin Simrad NSX units, a seven and a nine. Um, they're on an NMEA network and, and also an Ethernet network, um, connected into the I command gauges for the outboard. Um, <clears throat> yeah, heaps of storage. So under this seat box is a 50 litre fridge. Um, yeah, massive storage un under that seat. Um, <clears throat> I've modified the seat boxes from the standard 6500 HTO seat boxes so that they're closed in on the back 
Again, that gives you extra, sto extra storage. Um, this one has six self-inflating life jackets. Uh, this one has, an, has another life jacket and the flares in it. Um, and then down to the transom, which is, I guess, where all the, you know, the big changes were. Um, you've effectively flipped the transom over from the standard design. So all of the battery storage is after the, after the transom frame. Yeah, so battery boxes, a, a single battery in there, which is the start battery. Um, this side has my oil container and house battery. There's actually room in those boxes. I could probably get two more batteries in there if I wanted. Um, and, and then, you know, the live bait tank slash bin, which, um, yeah, w was one of the things that Andre and I changed on the fly um, in the build process. Um, so, yeah, the finish. Uh, again, I wanted, I wanted to be able to do as much of the finish as I could myself. Um, spray painting is not something I'm good at. And in the process of looking at secondhand boats, one of the things I'd noticed is that everything that was over five years old, you could see paint bubbling everywhere. Um, while I was looking, I actually came across a, an old uh, uh, crab boat, which had, um, was, in, was X survey, obviously. And, and it just had the plain alley finish. And I thought that looks really good. So sort of grabbed hold of that and um, yeah, so it's a, I've sanded it to 120 grit all over, um, except for the cab up. The cab up is 80 grit. Um, it's been acid washed and, and then finished with um, Nylic, which you can just roll on with a foam roller. Um, yeah, I, I had a, wrap, a half wrap done by a, a local sign, uh, sign writer uh, called Fine Line Signs. And, um, and yeah, I guess really that, that's as complicated as it was. It consumed an enormous amount of time in terms of that, you know, of, of that sort of four to six weeks that I've been working on it. That's probably half of it. Um, yeah, but yeah, I'm I'm really happy with the way it's come up. Um, really happy with the way it handles. Um, and, and yeah, look, everywhere I've been, there's been sort of compliments for the way it looks and um, and, and the way it's finished. So really stoked with it. Thank you.